Hi, in today's video I'd like to show you how I organize my YouTube channel's content in Obsidian and how I have automated my process using Obsidian Templator, the Kanban plugin and Xcolidraw. So this video is going to be slightly more technical but I wanted to show you some very powerful automation opportunities and unfortunately without being more technical that is not possible and also in this video i'm going to continue my exploration of different plugins that you can use in your visual thinking toolkit today we are going to look at the kanban board and in earlier videos you might remember the map view plugin and the leaflet plugin and i still hope to bring other videos demonstrating some other cool plugins that you can add to your visual thinking toolkit. So let's dive in. I store my YouTube content in Obsidian such that I have a folder for each of my projects. So for example, you can see that today's video is here in this folder and in the folder I have a couple of items. I have a video subfolder and the video subfolder I exclude from Obsidian Sync because I don't want to clog up sync with the large video files, uh, the recordings. And then I have two drawings here. One is the storyboard and this is the file that we are looking at right here and the other is the video thumbnail. Now, if I control click on the thumbnail, I can open up the thumbnail for editing and say, for example, I want to change this cog to red. I can just simply click on the cog, change the color to red. And when I navigate back to my storyboard, then you can see that my embedded image has changed. So that's the basic logic. I organize all of my videos on a Kanban board. So let me just show you that. And on this Kanban board, you will see that I have a card for each of my videos. These are the published videos. I don't have all the published videos here. Some of them I archive. And when I click archive, so let me show you. So for example, here's uh, this uh, video that I'd like to archive. If I click here and click the archive card command, then it will disappear from the published column. And I will need to open up the Kanban board in markdown view. And I will need to uh, scroll down and here at the bottom of the archive list, I will find my uh, video that I've just archived. So that's the way you can see all my archived videos here. And the reason for archiving is you can already see it takes a bit of time to open up this board. And that is because when the board is opened, then all of these drawings are created so that you can see the thumbnails here and that takes up quite some resources and therefore I don't have all of my videos here under published. If I want to look at uh, them in a list later on, I switch to the markdown view. The benefit of storing my videos here is I can just simply drag and drop these cards as my videos move through the workflow. So how do I create one of these cards? It's quite simple. All you need to do is you need to drag and drop the thumbnail here. And once you have the thumbnail here, uh, if you double click, uh, you put an exclamation mark in front and then press enter, then this will become a, an image. Now you cannot click on the image. That is why I add the storyboard as a link. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to create a separate card for the storyboard. I'm going to double click and simply copy this text uh, from here. I'm going to close this and delete the card and then come back here, press shift enter and paste my storyboard. And then I'm going to type the pipe character and then storyboard. I'm just going to type that in. Now, this is actually 
painfully slow on the Kanban board. I don't quite know what the reason is, but it is uh, it is very slow. So I don't recommend doing it this way, but I wanted to show you how you would put this together here. It's already one step faster if you do all of this in the markdown view. So let's say I want to create the same card again. The way I do it is I press control enter to add a checklist item. Then I drag my thumbnail here. I then type uh, BR, which is the HTML for a line break. And then I drag my storyboard here and I add the pipe character and storyboard. So I will type the alias for this and I come uh, to the beginning of the line and add an exclamation mark. And then if I switch back to the Kanban board, then you will see now I have already uh, three instances of this same workflow. So I'm going to delete this. So this would be the manual process. Now, because this can be quite cumbersome, I created uh, some automation to do all of this for me. So let me show you how that works. And you can initiate this automation from wherever you want on any markdown page. I'm now going to do this from my daily notes page. If I initiate Templator, I have a template called YouTube Create. When I execute this workflow, it will ask for the name of the project. So uh, the uh, demo project for video. That's going to be the title of my project today. And when I hit enter, then you will see that uh, a storyboard for my demo project for video was created. If I open this for drawing in the center of my storyboard is an embedded image, which is the thumbnail. So if I control hover this, then you can see that this is an embedded image and I can open this link. And if I want, I can start to draw my mind map here and uh, like this i can click my button and i can start to work on my storyboard i can also control click on my thumbnail so you can see that this has taken me to the thumbnail page and here i can add something to my thumbnail like that and now if i open here my youtube channel MOC file, then you will see that I have this new project automatically added here with the link to the storyboard. And so this automation helps me a speed up the process of creating these thumbnails and all the files for the video. And it also helps with making sure that I follow uh, my standard approach. So I have the naming conventions and everything created. So we can also take a look here that if I scroll down, this is the demo project for the video that was created. And it actually has the storyboard and the thumbnail file plus the video folder already created. Now what I still need to do manually is I need to go to sync settings and I need to add the folder in sync settings uh, to my uh, exclude folder list. I'm not going to do this because I'm going to delete all of this uh, after the video, but you get the idea. So let me show you how these templates look like. And I actually created shortcuts for us here today so we can work quicker. So let's first look at the core templator file that is driving the whole process and that is the YouTube create file. It is a relatively long script and maybe it looks intimidating at first. It is really not a very difficult script. In the beginning I set two constants here. Uh, one is the root folder of my YouTube channel in my vault and the other is the name of the Kanban file 
that has all my videos. So these are two constants that I define in the beginning. And then I prompt using the templater uh, system prompt. I prompt for the folder name of the project. And with that, uh, then I, I create the folder path using the project root and adding the folder name here. I first check if this folder already exists. If by some mistake, I would not remember that I've created a project already for a topic, it will automatically open the storyboard for that project in case that storyboard exists. If it doesn't exist, then it's going to raise an alert telling me that the folder already exists and it will stop execution. If the folder doesn't exist, the script will move on to first create the folder and then to create the video subfolder under that. And then I will create first the thumbnail file using my YouTube thumbnail template. I'll show you this in a second. And then I'm going to add to the Kanban file. So I'm opening or looking for the Kanban file first. And this Kanban path was added here in the beginning. If the Kanban file exists, then I create my card. You could see in my demonstration that the card looks like this. It starts with a checkbox item and then with an exclamation mark, I have the thumbnail and then a line break. And I have the storyboard with an alias uh, called the storyboard. And once I have my card created, I read the Kanban board file. I split it at the ideas column so I can add uh, my new item right at the top of ideas. And then I modify the Kanban file, simply stitching together the previous file and inserting the new card in between uh, the parts before and after ideas. And finally, I create the video storyboard. Again, I have a template for that. So if we look at these two templates, the YouTube storyboard and the YouTube thumbnail, those are, I think, very interesting templates. So let's first look at the YouTube thumbnail template. So this is how the thumbnail template looks like. I have this rectangle here and this rectangle has a dimension of 1920 by 1080 and that is the HD resolution. And I add this rectangle because it helps me size the thumbnail such that it will export to a well-sized PNG file that I can upload to YouTube. And in the center, I have a text element that looks a bit funny. So you can see that this is actually a templator script and it will add the file folders name here. And because the folder name is the name of the project, so let me show you here, the folder name is demo project for a video. Therefore, when templator runs on this page, remember this is really a markdown file. So when templator runs on this markdown file, it will replace this with the folder name. And if I look at the end result, you will see, I need to switch back to drawing mode. You will see that it was replaced with the demo project for video. The other file is very similar. So if I look at my storyboard template, it is similar. There's one specific here and that is under the embedded files section. I have this script that will automatically update the embedded file uh, here in the template with the thumbnail file that was just uh, created. So here I'm generating the name of the thumbnail file. And there's another trick here later on. 
here right here so within the json under file id for the image element i also have uh, this script and there's one more trick here and that trick is right up here i don't want this template to open as an xcolidraw file so right now this template will never open as an xcolidraw file because if xcolidraw were to load this file then it would overwrite my script so i want to make sure that this remains a, a static file and therefore here i put the first triple dash starting the front matter into this templater script tag what this does is simply will print three dashes when it executes but by doing this uh, i don't have a proper front matter for this document and xcolidraw will not recognize this as an xcolidraw drawing so how did i generate this file this was extremely simple to generate the way i did this was i created a file like this and actually not a file like this but a file like my storyboard just a sec so i created a file like this but without the line and i switched over to markdown view and then i started to do my edits so first of all i added the this change that i just explained a second ago uh, like this and with this now this is this is fixed this will never switch back to being an xcolidraw file and then i replaced this part right here with the script that you saw a second ago so here i place this script there the script actually is very simple it generates a 40 character long unique id and then it adds the uh, the link to the thumbnail and so that's what i would do here i would replace this with the script and i would replace this right here with the script that you can see in the storyboard i think this is really not that complicated but there are a couple of tricks that if you're aware of it will make it much easier to create such uh, templates so that's about it what i've showed you today is how i manage all my videos on the kanban board and you could see that I use the thumbnail for each video plus the storyboard as the content for my card and this way I can drag and drop these cards uh, on the board. I showed you how I archive stuff and also how the structure of such a card looks like here uh, in the Kanban board view as well as when you open up in markdown view how this looks like and then we went over the process and i've showed you walked you through my uh, core templater script as well as showed you the two xcolidraw files that serve as templates in this process in this case you can simply instead of the text element you can type in this command also in this case i actually edited uh, also some of the front matter of this template as well but the generic content you can see is that this text element is uh, replaced with this link and so that's about it if you want to play with uh, this solution yourself i'm going to upload all my templates and include a link in the video description so you can take a look at the various files here and customize it to your own workflow i hope you found this video helpful this was slightly more technical but i also think that this has demonstrated some very cool opportunities to automate your workflow in obsidian thank you